Now, zooming out, how far did you get with your education? I graduated high school. And were there any thoughts on furthering your education after that? Uh, yes, I did want to um, attend a college in my hometown. You wanted to, but you never got that far to. Right. And what stopped you? Um, my boxing career, you know, it started elevating. And for me to keep elevating, I had to dedicate all my time to, to boxing. Any regret on that decision making on how everything's played out thus far? No, I don't regret that. And why not? Some people do harbor regrets in their life. Oh, um, I look at life as, you know, you got to live life because it's your life. So you got to live it how you want to. So you can't really look at it as having regret regrets. You just got to do what you got to do. Now, for those in the audience getting to know you for the very first time, care to share where you were born? I'm from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And care to share where you were raised? Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Now, does it get any more specific than that? Like a particular portion of Winston-Salem you represent, perhaps? Uh, East Side. And what ages do you think you were raised specifically on the East Side for? Or what grades, perhaps, if it, the ages isn't so clear? It'll be majority of my life. It was times we we'll bounce around other locations, but majority of my life, I stay at my grandpa house, which is on the east side. And do you still reside in Winston Salem today? No, I live in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And care to share what age you were when you moved out? Twenty. And what was the reason for that move in your life back then at that age? Uh, to elevate my boxing career, it um. Went out there for vacation and it turned into me becoming who I am today. And speaking of today, care to share your current age as well at this point? I'm 22 right now. And your birthday while you're at it, the month and the day perhaps? November 18th. Now circumstances could be different for everyone. But can you give the audience five tips on moving to Vegas? Um, you gotta be prepared for the heat. It's the heat is very different. Um, you know, obviously I'm from the South from North Carolina, so it's not a, a big population. So the population out there is very huge. So you gotta be used to a lot of people. That's the only, that's the thing I'm still trying to adapt to now. It's just a lot of people all the time. People coming in, people going out. Um, People can't drive out there either, so you got to be careful when you're out there because they, they, they can't drive at all. And uh, Two that, more if you got two more. Well, one of the major things I can say is going out there, you can't let the casinos and stuff get in your head. A lot of people go out there and they gamble and they life turn around because they done blew all their money out. So. That's one of the major things I say, and that's pretty much it. Now, just dissecting some of these elements you mentioned, when it comes to that heat, what's the highest temperature you've seen thus far? Um, it will have been this year. I think it reached up to like 116 or 114. And what does that feel like? It's hot, like, you know, and then it's dry heat too, you know, it, over here is moisture in the south, so there's dry heat, so it's it's a lot different. Now, when you were in North Carolina, what's the highest you've seen temperature-wise, if you can recollect? I want to say it was like the high 90s, like 96, 97 maybe. Okay, and taking you back to those days back in Winston-Salem, specifically the east side, what was that? really like growing up in that area for you? Um, it, it was okay. It had its ups and downs. Um, where I grew up at, it was a lot of older people in that neighborhood, so it wasn't really kids or anything that I associate with in that neighborhood. I go to other neighborhoods that was close by and see people there. Um, so besides, if I wasn't 
leaving out the neighborhood, in the neighborhood, you know, I really didn't do too much. I stay in the house, might go outside, do something in the backyard. But besides that, you know, like I said, it has its ups and downs. Um, the street I stayed on, it's a lot of activity on that street. There'd be a lot of shootings and stuff like that. But where I was at, it was pretty, it was, it was, it was okay. Care to share the name of the street or neighborhood that um, you're referencing here? Uh, we call it 311, that's uh, New Walker Town Road. Okay, now let's discuss both of these elements, the ups and the downs. When it comes to the downs, what was that bottom point for you during your upbringing on that east side? What was your lowest point or most negative moment growing up for you? Growing up, it had to be me getting bullied. Um, when I was younger, you know, being light skinned with a, around a lot of a dark skinned people, they they pick on you a lot. I was small, chubby. I was always the smallest one, a late bloomer, in school. So. I'd be smaller than everybody, so they always pick on me and stuff. So I will always be fighting. So, and that's actually what got me into boxing. So, um, that would say I say that was the lowest. Now, when it came to fighting, there are some that engage in fights in school, but they don't take up the sport of boxing. What got you to actually take the sport of boxing from all those fights in school? My mother, she um got fed up with me fighting all the time. So she put me in boxing at uh, 14th Street Rec in Winston. And um, it just took off from there. You know, they, the coaches there, they seen I had a talent, I had a gift with it. And they was uh, kept telling my mom to get me to, to um, pursue a co competition fights. She didn't want me to at first. She just wanted me to learn how to defend myself. And then I was off and on with it and around Eighth grade, it was like two, three days before the school year ended, I got into another fight. And um, basically the kid was known to be a bully, so the school wanted to press charges on him. But in order to do that, they had to press charges on the other student, which had been me. So we had to go to uh, like a guidance counselor before court and the guidance counselor would choose if we need to go to court. And when I was there, they gave me a flyer um, for boxing. And then that's when I got back into boxing and that's when I started taking it more serious. Now, when it comes to things as bullying, well, I was gonna ask you something, but I think you may have answered this question. You mentioned something of a guidance counselor, mm -hmm. okay? Now, the question was gonna be asked was, when it came to bullying, mentally, has this been something you sought any professional help over? But with that guidance counselor you had at one point in your life, answer this question or? Um, no, it, that that was like a one-time thing to decide if we need to go to court or anything for like charges. Um, but as far as the bullying go, like, you know, growing up, it's either, you know, you, you eat or get, get ate. So, you know, I had to start eating and be that top dog and start being able to stand up for myself. So it really wasn't an issue as far as growing up. It was like when I was just really younger, like elementary school. Be that as it may, do you feel like you need any help mentally with things such as that that you've experienced in the past, like bullying now? Um, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, not now. And why not? Some people do. Um, I look at life as everything happens for a reason. So, you know, I, that was just something I had to go through to make me a better person, a better man. And if I didn't go th through that, I probably wouldn't be as good as a fighter I am today. And just for further, th excuse me, just for further transparency, aside from that one time visit with the guidance counselor, never had any uh, mental health professional services no. in your life. Now, for you, how were you able to survive that upbringing in, excuse me, on the east side of Winston-Salem? You mentioned things such as shootings and so on and so forth. Sometimes people don't make it through things of that nature. Right. What do you think was your key to survival um, of that area? My mom and dad, you know, they always gave me great wisdom, great guidance. Uh, of course, you know, growing up, I was hard headed, you know, as everybody is, we make mistakes. So I did do things and stuff that I wasn't supposed to do, but they always make sure right or wrong, they stand by my side to make sure I get that correct guidance. And so I can't take the correct route. 
Now, there are some people who say things like, don't know if I'll make it to see the age of 18 or 21, perhaps. Did you have any of these thoughts yourself growing up on the east side of Winston-Salem back then? Um, Not really. Sometimes I did feel like that. Like, if I, like, I still feel like that now. Like, if I still lived in the city, when I went, I feel like I wouldn't be as far as I am in my career now, too. I feel like I, I wouldn't really be having too much of a career if I was still in the city. Now, was there a specific numeric figure you had in mind back then you might not make to see? Or was it just a thought? It was just a thought. Just a thought. Be that as it may, knowing what you know now, hypothetically speaking, what would you have said to your younger self back then, if anything? I wouldn't have said nothing. Because that would have changed the path. And I would have had to go down that same path to make it to where I am today. Okay, now let's speak on the ups. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, what was the top point for you during your upbringing on the east side of Winston-Salem? What was your highest point or most positive moment for you growing up in that environment? Oh, hold on. It's cool if I mention when you got home. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, I didn't want you know. You know. <laughs> All right. Okay. You you just go or you gonna repeat? Oh yeah, you can start wherever, whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, that would have been when my dad got home. My dad was locked up for a majority of my life when I was younger, but when he came home and I had both parents in the household, that really changed a lot because. I always felt like I didn't have that father figure growing up. And I felt like a lot of things would went different if I did. But at the same time, you know, it was a reason that it didn't happen because I still wouldn't have been the man I am today. If I did have him there, you know, I probably wouldn't have been in the boxing like I am now or anything like that. So that would be the, the biggest thing was when my dad came home and I had both parents. Do you remember what age he was when he came back in your life? I was, or what grade? Third, thirteen, twelve, or thir I, no, 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 I was. I graduated fifth, so I think I was like eleven, or turning twelve, maybe. So beginning of middle school. Yeah, it was. It was about to be. It was going into the beginning of middle school. Yeah, because he he was, if I'm not mistaken, he was able to make it to my fifth grade graduation. Okay, got it. So it was around that time then. Now, um. You mentioned he was able to make it to your fifth grade graduation. Did you know he was going to be there? Was that a surprise? No, no, I knew he, he was going to be able to be there. Um, so, yeah, it was around that time, and that's when he, when he came home. Now, did you see him on his actual first day out? I can't remember. I can't recall. Just curious there. And uh, what age were you when he got incarcerated? One, two, I was one or two. Now, between the age of one or two to about 11-ish, around that age, uh, did you maintain a relationship with him during his incarceration? Do you have any memories of that at all? Yes, yes. My, my mom always made sure we had a relationship. She would take me to go visit him. We always do phone calls and stuff like that. So. We still had a, a relationship, but it wasn't um, it wasn't like how we have now, because obviously, you know, it wasn't hands on. It was through the phone or me going to visit when my mom can take me to visit. And did you have another male figure in your life no. during his incarceration? No. And when he comes home, he actually stays in the same roof with your mother or is it two separate households? Uh, at first, they have something called a halfway house, so he had to do that first, and then once he was able to leave from there, we, we all lived together in the same household. Now, is there a question you receive you dislike getting asked? Something you can't stand to answer, perhaps? Maybe it's a repetitive question, something you receive all the time. It could be from fans or strangers asking you this. Um... I just, I, it's crazy because I just recently got over it not too long ago. So this used to be the, the question, but 
every time when people ask me how did I get into boxing, I I never like because I never like to talk about you know that with the bullying and all that stuff. I always was embarrassed to talk about that, so I will always hate that question. But then eventually I got over it and I embraced it. 